Hey guys, I'm Philip Wilder. If you haven't checked out my last few videos, God's Hidden Fingerprints in Our Universe, in winter, in spring, and in summer, I would encourage you to check those videos out because today we're going to be looking at God's Hidden Fingerprints in the season of fall. Let's get to it. I love fall. It's kind of a tie a little bit between fall and spring as far as which is my favorite season, but I'm a pretty sentimental kind of guy. And so because of that, just the season of fall holds a particular significance to me. Knowing that a season is ending, that a summer is ending, and something new is on its way just really strikes me. And I love the fall colors as well too. I love corn mazes, I love Thanksgiving. There's just a lot of wonderful things in fall. Well, fall, I think, also holds a particular significance when it comes to looking at our lives as Christians. I mentioned in my video about winter is that basically that symbolizes the time of our lives before we knew Jesus. We are basically dead like all the trees. Even though the trees are technically alive and even though we're technically alive, spiritually, we are dead. Well, when spring comes and when trees start producing leaves to respond to the sun's warmth, just as we need to respond to God's loving act of coming down and dying on the cross for us, we then can start to see a new life, vibrant life, and it's just joyful, it's full of beauty, it's wonderful. But when that spring season starts ending and when summer comes, we need to make sure we have deep roots because the emotions are not there to stay. The emotions will come and go. And so we need to make sure that our faith is based in the facts rather than simply just in our emotions. Well, we talked about 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 5, where Paul basically encourages Timothy to say, as for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, and do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. And this is in contrast to other believers who don't stay strong in their faith, who get distracted with false teachings and go aside to what they just want to believe and what they just want to do, rather than sticking to what is truly good. So, Paul then continues on from there, and this is what we're going to be focusing on today. Verses 6 through 8 in 2 Timothy says, 2 Timothy 4 says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. There's a lot of great things in this verse here, and I'll unpack it a little bit more. But the important thing is, is we need to endure in our ministry. Just as we need to be bearing fruit in summer, just as the plants do in summer, especially in fall, we need to bear fruit. Because there's one unique element of fall, and it is that we do not know when it will really, truly hit. It might be warm for a long time, but then suddenly the temperature will drop and all the crops will freeze. So we need to make sure, and farmers know this, we need to make sure that we are harvesting fruit and produce and our harvest basically once it is ripe. If we wait any longer, the cold might come in and it might destroy all that we've been working towards. And that is true for our lives as Christians. We need to make sure that we are being faithful and following God diligently and reaching out to the lost all around us because we do not know when their end will come. We do not know when the weather will get cold and when all that we've been working towards is going to vanish, whether that be us passing on or the person we're ministering passing on. We need to make sure that we are being faithful so that when that happens, we are not surprised or feel like the work we were doing was unfinished. Paul says here, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. He says his time has come. Of course, he doesn't know exactly when. 
Well, oftentimes we can start to see signs of when it is coming. Maybe our body starts breaking down or maybe just the season is obviously closing and we know that the ministry we've been working towards is coming to a close. We also need to make sure that we are fighting the good fight As Paul said, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. We need to make sure we're being diligent in all things and working hard so that when our day does come, when we do pass on to the next life, we can honestly look back at this life and admit that we have fought the good fight and run the good race and kept the faith with every day that God entrusted to us. We need to make sure that we are being faithful so that we can look back on these lives and not feel like we wasted these lives chasing things that don't matter, that don't build up to anything in eternity. Well, lots of people, when they think about their death or the end of their life, they can get pretty sad. But Paul here is eagerly awaiting it. And there's another verse that says, that Paul says, where he basically makes a claim to live is Christ, but to die is gain. It's better for him to die because he knows that his life will be better. But if he's going to live, he is going to live for Christ. And we need to make sure that we are keeping that same mentality, that we are living for Christ. And that if we die, hooray, now we can enter into the next part of our lives full of just walking with God physically and being in God's presence every single day for the rest of eternity. So Paul is eagerly waiting for this time and he's excited for this time. And I hope that each of us can be eagerly waiting for this time and excited for the life to come rather than dreading when the end of our lives will come. And that can really only happen when we are diligently following God and running the good race and fighting the good fight. Now, some of you might not even have a relationship with Jesus. And if that's the case, I would encourage you to do so right away because you don't know when fall is going to come. You don't know when the end of your life is going to come. You could be completely healthy and have a heart attack, or you could get hit by a car, or a tree can fall on you. Crazy things happen. We know this. And it can happen to you at any given point in time. There is no safe place. Even while social distancing, your life is in danger. You do not know when the end of your life will come. And so I would strongly encourage you, look up the facts. See what truly is real. I'd encourage you to check out some more of these Bible Bites that point you to the facts, that point you to the truth. You can also check out our video training series about the best facts. It's on our YouTube channel, Great Commission Alliance Media, and you can be grounded in some solid scientific facts that support the Bible and support Christianity. Our faith is grounded in facts, and we can know that for certain. So do not wait, do not hesitate. Turn to the facts, turn to Christ, and ask him to come into your life and save you from your sins because we are not good enough on our own to deserve God. We need Jesus to die on our behalf so that we then can take the perfect life he lived upon ourselves and be with God forever and restore that relationship between us and God. If you are interested in doing that or if you've already, if you just did that, I'd encourage you to check out growingwithjesus.com. But for the rest of you, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this mini-series about God's hidden fingerprints. I hope it encouraged you in your faith and just helped you to see that God's beauty is written all around us in all of creation. Have a great day, and again, thank you for watching.